Okay, today we are going to look at exponential functions. And an exponential function is simply uh, one in which we're repeatedly multiplying by the same amount, okay? And it can be written in this form in its simplest uh, arrangement. And that is where this is um, any particular amount that is changing. So this is like our output. And what we're doing is we are watching it grow or decay over time. This is usually time. Although it would not have to be, but nearly overwhelmingly all the time, it's time. Uh, this is an initial amount. And then this is our all-important multiplying factor, okay? And that is going to be found usually with a couple of data points, or it'll be given to you. In this case, we're going to consider an endangered species, the wild Welsh wombat. And we're going to assume that in the year 2000, there were 37 of those little critters, and they're endangered, and so they're being protected. And by 2005, there are 48. Now, we're going to make the assumption that populations tend to grow by multiplying by a consistent amount, a percentage increase. And so we're going to say that is our exponential growth, okay? You'll be told, usually, if a problem is exponential or if it's a population or bacteria, or if it's something like a carbon-14 that's decaying, we can assume that to be exponentially. All right. So how do we work with this? Well, we've got the year 2000, we observed 37 of those guys. In 2005, they've grown to 48. We can say that our growth factor over this five-year period is not by a certain number of individuals by counting. We would not say the growth factor is by adding 11 because that's linear growth. That would be going up by 11 every five years. This is by multiplying by a percentage or a, an amount. So we can make this 48 over 37. That's our growth factor. You can take and punch that into your calculator and come up with a decimal. You can leave it like that if you prefer. It's very close to 1.3. So sometimes in the real world, we'll round up or down to get a nice number. It's a little bit less than 1.3, so we'll go with that. So how do I find the next well, I multiply the population in 2005 by our growth factor, 1.3, and that's going to give me approximately 62.4. Well, then I would take 62.4, that population, and I'd multiply to find out in the year 2015 what the population will be, and that's going to be around 81.12, okay? And then finally, the population in the year 2020 is going to be that 81.12 times, again, the growth factor, which we'll assume is staying the same, and it will change in some problems, uh, but that's more an advanced math where something like a disease or predation or overpopulation will change that. But right now we're assuming it's constant, and that gives us a population of about 105.5. Now, obviously, you can't have half of a wombat, but we'll model the population as precisely as we can, so we'll use that decimal, and then in any given year, we can uh, round it to a whole, a whole wombat if we want. All right, so what do I do? Well, I want to answer the question, when will the population be 100? Well, I can use a process called interpolation. I could say, well, it's going to be somewhere in this time period, but I can find a more precise answer by writing an equation, okay? So the way we write an equation here is, I'm going to go back to, uh, clear off the board a little bit. I want to find out when it gets to 100. Well, I would go back to this equation. I'd say my population, based on time, is going to be um, from my starting population of 37 times my growth factor, 1.3, and then it's going to be raised to an exponent. Now, if I just call that t up there, I have to remember that my initial measuring period was in five years. So if I keep it as t, t stands for five-year periods of time. Every time t goes up by 1, I've gone another 5 years, and I'm multiplying by another 1.3. But I can make it a yearly thing if I adjust it and go divided by 5. Now there's an assumption that that's in parentheses there, so you want to be careful when you type that into your calculator. But this way, every time t goes up by another 5 years, this exponent goes up by another 1. And if it's not a perfect 5-year period, if it's 3 years or 2 years, then it'll go up by that fraction, and it'll be... Um, more, I think, more easy for us to work with it, okay? So that's how you write the equation. And then I'm going to type that into the calculator, and I'm going to solve for when 
as nearly exactly as I can get to 100. Okay? Okay, well I've typed this into the calculator here. It's 37 uh, times 1.3 raised to the x over 5 uh, with the parentheses carrying on down here. Um, you want to be careful to uh, include the parentheses, otherwise it'll raise it to the x and then divide the whole thing by 5, and we don't want that. Now I go to the window, and I think it's good to not get distracted and uh, try to find the graphing rectangle by doing zoom 6 or anything like that. Go right to the window and ask yourself some sensible questions about what these uh, are asking, really. The x is our time. The minimum amount of time my Welsh wombats could be growing is zero years. I'm not going to go into negative time unless I'm interested in maybe seeing what it was before the um, they started keeping data and assuming the population growth was beginning from smaller numbers, but we can't make, really make that assumption. Um, the x max, I would say maybe I can track these guys for maybe 50 years or something like that, but we'll see. My scale then is usually about 10 percent, so I'm going to make it a little bit larger, but nice round 10. My y minimum, well my minimum population could be zero. Um, I'll start off with zero. I could also make it 37 if I wanted to. Uh, my maximum population, well I'm interested in going up to 100, but let's go a little bit larger than that, 120 say, and my scale there can be 10 as well. When I hit the graph, there's my population starting at 37, and it's growing up to uh, larger than 100, and it's happening in much less time than I had anticipated. So, But that's a pretty good start. If I want to solve this problem for what the original question was, when did it get to be 100, I simply type in y equals 100, and that will give me a horizontal line. And my question is, when does it get to that exact spot? Well, the TI graphing calculator is good for this. I do second and hit the trace button. That gives me this calculate menu, and I'm looking for where they intersect. So I basically hit 5, and then I can just hit enter, enter, enter. When there are only two curves, I don't have to worry about choosing one or the other. I'm bound to get both of them. Uh, it's not a parabola, it's intersecting in two places, it's just this one. And that is after 18.9 years. Well, we're starting in the year 2000, so that'll be in the year 2018. If I can remember that 18.948, and I quit out of it, I can do 18.948, and I can say, well, take away the 18 years, so if I subtract 18 years, that's the decimal of the year that's left over. Well, if I multiply that by 12 months, I can find out that it's 11 months and 0.37 of a month. So if I take away 11, I can multiply that by, say, 31 days or 30 days in a month, and I can get, oh, that, whoops, um, I wanted to multiply that, 0.376 times 30. 0.376 times 30, I didn't hit the multiplication, and it's 11 days. So it's 18 years, 11 months, and 11 days. I could get down to hours, minutes, and seconds, but that would be a little bit pointless. That's how you do it. Good luck. Okay, if you would simply read through this problem, uh, it's about Madam C.J. Walker and her hair care products and how they grew exponentially became very profitable and you can follow the equation here that's given and answer five, six, seven, eight, and 9. So uh, try to do those and bring them in on the next day we have class. Thanks.